Uh, are you familiar with uh, Marcuse's principle of repressive tolerance? As you're saying all this, this is what I'm thinking about. Oh, very much so. I grew up with that. Uh, he was at Brandeis University when I started at Harvard University. And, you know, he was a neo-fascist of the left. Uh, and uh, he was one of the first academics who justified um, censorship, justified repression. Um, he said over and over again, there's no reason to let them have their ideas expressed. We know we're right. This was part of the so-called Berlin School of whatever. Uh, it, it, uh, it's interesting because although it was grew out of anti-Nazism, it turned into its own form of fascism. So Marcuse was kind of the godfather of the of the woke repressionist movement. And how dare they call themselves progressives? They are regressives. They are reactionaries. They are repressors. They want to stop due process and free speech and equal protection. I just I think you mean the Frankfurt School. Is that right? Yes, that's what okay. I mean. Wonderful. Um, I'm, there's three principles that have dominated your life. I'm just going to read them because I found this very, very valuable. Um, number one, freedom of expression and conscience. Number two, due process, fundamental fairness, and the adversary system of seeking justice. And I want to kind of get into that a little bit because I think it's very underappreciated what, what, why this is so critical. And three, you know, basic equality and meritocracy. And, you know, basically you argue that these three things are fundamental. The moment you dispense with one of them, things fall apart. Yes, and the one that's the most unpopular today is the adversary system. Uh, if you want to appreciate defense lawyers like me, go to Iran, go to the Soviet Union, go to Russia, go to China, go to Cuba, where people can't get defenses. Don't wish for things that you don't want. And, you know, uh, People just say, I'm such a horrible person because I defended O.J. Simpson. I defended Leona Helmsley. I defended so-and-so. Uh, -so. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to continue to do that just the way John Adams defended those who were accused of the Boston Massacre. And uh, Abraham Lincoln defended unpopular people. Clarence Darrow did. Thurgood Marshall did. It's the essence of our system, and yet it's very unpopular. People love me when I defend people they like. And they hate me when I defend people they don't like. People walk up to me in the street and say, we used to like you and respect you. Now we're so disappointed. And I say to them, you were wrong ever to respect me or like me. I was never on your side. I was on the side of due process and justice and civil liberties. Back in the day, they came out on your side. But today, the victims of due process and civil liberties often are Republicans, conservatives, Christians, Jews. Um, people who are not popular with the woke generation. Uh, I'm also going to read something quickly, which I pulled from the book. I thought it was the most powerful quote that I hadn't been aware of. Um, H.L. Mencken, uh, the trouble with fighting for human freedom is that, that one spends most of one's time defending scoundrels, for it is against scoundrels that oppressive laws are first aimed, and oppression must be stopped at the beginning if it is to be stopped at all. Wow. I think that every day when I'm accused of defending Donald Trump. In many ways, Donald Trump is a scoundrel. Um, I don't agree with him. I voted against him. Um, if he committed a crime, I would want to see him impeached or go to prison. Uh, but, but I'm not rooting for him. But I don't want to see the laws applied against him. And so many civil libertarians now want to expand the criminal law for, give you an example. There's a statute called the Espionage Act of 1917, the most hated law for liberals. Eugene V. Debs, they got. They got Dr. Spock under it. They got uh, uh, Daniel Ellsberg. Liberals all said, oh, my God, you got to abolish that statute. Now you have the New York Times and liberals editorializing in favor of expanding that statute and applying it broadly to Donald Trump's or sedition statutes. They were used against, you know, anarchists and communists in the 1910s and 20s. Now they want them to be used against people who participated in January 6th. Now, I'm opposed to what happened on January 6th, but I'm more opposed to using sedition laws to try to get them. This was a protest that got out of hand, uh, a violent protest that shouldn't have happened. But don't overreact by keeping people in prison for months without a trial and charging them, as some people want to do, with sedition. My former colleague, Lawrence Tribe, has suggested that the Attorney General of the United States should prosecute Donald Trump for attempting to murder Vice President Pence. 
my God, what would that do to the rule of law? There's no law of attempts that would apply to that. Tribe is making it up. But he's willing to make it up if it's part of Get Trump. By the way, that's my next book, Get Trump, and how the attempt to get Trump is destroying civil liberties and human rights in America. Well, and, and I, I want to cover that a little bit because I, I want to sort of tackle some of you. You have you know, views on the election, views on free speech, and these things kind of come together around Trump. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. Before we get there, I just want to finish this piece. You, make, you said you're on the side of justice, um, and, but you also make this really interesting distinction. You cite Judge Oliver Wendell Holmes uh, and, and how he says, well, no, I'm on the, we're on the side of law. We're not on the side of justice. And so that isn't necessarily obvious why these things are not the same. I'll give you an example. Today, to convict somebody, you have to prove his guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. But what if he is guilty, but there's no evidence of reasonable doubt? Um, and so you get a guilty person going free. That's not justice. That's the law. That's a good law. Better 10 guilty go free than one innocent be wrongly convicted. That's a good law. Emanates from the Bible, from Abraham's arguments with God over the sinners of Saddam. Uh, but it's not justice. And uh, I have produced injustice on some occasions. I, yes, I have occasionally gotten guilty people off. I don't lose any sleep when I do that. Let me tell you when I lose sleep when I get an innocent person convicted. That's only happened a very, very few times in my life. But it has destroyed me because then I say it's my fault. If, you know, if a guilty person is set free, that's part of our system. Better 10 go free. But if an innocent person is convicted, I can't deal with that. It's so hard. That's why I fight so hard against that happening. It's foundational that you follow the law and you don't make exceptions. That's right. Now, look, you can have lawless law. If I were living in Nazi Germany, I wouldn't follow the law. But we live under a country of law, and uh, our legal system is a good one. It doesn't always produce the right results. Um, I'm not Socrates. I wouldn't drink the hemlock. Um, uh, there is room for civil disobedience. My grandfather, I'll give you a, terror, a wonderful example. My grandfather was poor as a church mouse. Uh, he had no resources, lived in a small place, and found out he had 28 relatives in Birno, Czechoslovakia on the eve of the Nazi invasion. And he went around to every neighbor and said, you have a basement, that's now a synagogue. You need a rabbi, you need a cantor. Had 28 false affidavits and saved the lives of 28 people from Nazi Germany. It was the proudest moment in his life. And if you ask me what, among all the people in my family who have done wonderful things, I admire most it's my grandfather's illegality in helping bring 28 people. And those 28 people are now among the most accomplished Americans. Uh, one of them was chairman of the Department of Engineering at Columbia. Another one is a major investor with medical technology. Another is a rabbi in Los Angeles. Another is a public relations person. These are great Americans. And they were brought out of the Holocaust by an illegal act, which is why I tend to be sympathetic with uh, Im immigrants who will do anything to come to America to save, to save themselves from prosecution. 